24 homecoming here at Hanover. Before I start, I'd like to introduce myself. Some of y'all know me, some of y'all don't. My name is Reverend Troy McCall. It's a pleasure meeting you all. I hope that we that you hear something today and take with you when you leave. Before the service starts, I'd like to open up in prayer. So those who can stand, would you please stand? Those who can't, I will stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Father, as humbly as we can, Father God, bowing down to you. Father God, we ask that you bless those who are on their way. Mm -hmm. Bless those that are have, who have made it, Father God, and those who can't come out and they sit at home. Do know that our prayers are with them, Father God. We'd like to say thank you for this day that we'll never see again. Thank you for the laying down and waking mm -hmm. up of us, Father God. Yeah. Father God, we ask that you bless the pastor of the black the speaker of the house mm -hmm. today bless the pastor pastor mm -hmm. mike and the first lady who stands beside him mm -hmm. we ask that you uh bless this service we would like for you to let the anointing of your spirit dwell down upon this mm -hmm. place let it go from heart to heart breast to breast from the front to the back from the ceiling to the floor mm -hmm. father god let your spirit run around in here and have its way mm -hmm. father god father god we come to you with this prayer in the mighty name of jesus everyone on one accord as a collective amen amen, amen. amen. you may be seated amen. <clears throat> yes first on agenda is we have scripture reading by deacon maurice hill okay scripture by deacon Okay, moving on to next on the agenda, we'd like to open up with a selection by the choir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir.
choir. Moving along, back to scripture, Deacon Maurice Hill. Good evening, good evening. Our scripture this evening is going to be coming out of uh, Jeremiah uh, 29, verses 11. It's going to be Jeremiah 29. We'll do verse 11. Coming out of King James Version. Mm -hmm. And it reads, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I'm going to read that same scripture coming out of the NIV version, mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, verses 11. And it says, for I know the plans I have for you, mm -hmm. declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plan to give you hope and future. I just read Je Jeremiah 29, verse 11. May the Lord bless the hearers and the readers of his holy word. Thank you, Brother Hill. We'll now have prayer by Trustee Kenzie M. Lewis. We'd like to do the welcome by Brother Horace, Reverend Horace Johnson.
high as your welcome person uh, to each and every one of you on this our awesome homecoming from the pastor and first family. We welcome you. We welcome you once, we welcome you twice. And we ask that you would sit back and enjoy, but don't go to sleep. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Next on the agenda is uh, our choir for the offering song. Thank you. 
pray. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to give just a portion uh, back to what you have given us. Our prayer is, God, that you would bless those that gave, and we pray an extra special blessing on those who wanted to give and had it not. The prayer is, Father, that you would open up the windows of heaven, pour them out a blessing so that they, too, might have an opportunity to give. Pray, God, that you would take up our little bit, that you would bless it, do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think with it, and that it might be used for the further uplifting of your kingdom on earth. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let the church say amen. Amen. be blessed with a praise dance.
like to have introduction of our guest uh, preacher by Deacon Tony Banks. Reverend Dr. Morris Oliver retired from the Federal Highway Administration of Washington, D.C. after almost 22 years. Dr. Oliver has a passion for ministering to lost souls, for empowering people in their spiritual gifts and ministering to pastors. He is a certified intentional interim pastor to the Center of Congregational Health. He served as an interim pastor at several churches including Victory Temple, Ministry Baptist Church in Alexandria, Honey Branch Baptist Church, <laughs> Old Site at in Fredericksburg and Long Beach Baptist Church. But you know, excuse me for a minute. My spirit after watching the dance and hearing that song, Reverend Oliver, the greatest introduction somebody can give you you know, you have all, he has all the things down here that is needed to be successful. All the degrees that, that you could want, all the achievements. But his greatest achievement is you let, I cry, my spirit can give witness that he is truly sent from God. Amen. And he is truly powerful. And I can give testimony that God knows him and that he knows God. And you have no great achievement than that. But for well as it is today, as we see what we see, hear what we see, mm -hmm. we need to know mm -hmm. that God knows <coughs> who he is. Right. We need to know that he sent to for us for a reason. Those that know him, I don't have to say a thing. Those that don't know him, only thing I need to say to you is sit back, listen to what thus says the Lord, shout and give his holy word all the joy, all the praise, and all the honor and worship is due to him. Only thing I can say is sit still and hear what thus says the Lord. That's the greatest introduction. Thank you, Deacon Banks. <laughs> we'll now have a sermonic hymn from our wonderful choir. <laughs>
you ain't gonna make it without him. You ain't going the same place. Amen. To the pastor of this fine church, why don't you give him a hand? It, it ain't easy. Pastor, it ain't easy. Seven months and four days ago, I was standing here as the, as the interim pastor of this fine church, and I was just a placeholder, a baton. I just carried a baton from Pastor Walker to your great pastor here. To all the preachers here, deacons, and Honey Branch, and I. Uh, since 20 years ago, I look around, I don't see a lot of the faces I saw 20 years ago. They're not here. They're going on and got their reward. That's why homecoming is so important. Because every now and then, you got to come home. Don't forget where you came from. To the pastor and the first lady, it's good to see you. My better half, my 51 plus percent is not here. She's under the weather. So I appreciate y'all praying for her. You feel pastors know you feel a little a little vacant, a little empty when you don't have your, your good thing beside you. So uh, y'all had to pray a little extra hard for me as we go through this. To the worship leader, you've done a wonderful job. And to the choir, give it up for the give it up for the band. Wonderful job. If you would go with me to the New Testament book of John, the Gospel of John, the second chapter, starting with the first verse. The Gospel of John, the second chapter, starting with the first verse. And it says, And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, Nike, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him, say, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wines. Yes, sir. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Thus beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Yes, sir. Amen. You may be seated. The 10th verse will be our focus. And he saith unto them, every man in the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Please pray with us from the message. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for all who are here. We thank you for friends who have gathered far and near. We thank you for those who may be listening online or through some other media device, Lord. We thank you for just blessing and opening up the hearts of those who haven't accepted you, that they would accept you today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The best right. is yet to come. Right. A life stressor is any event or experience that causes stress. Mm -hmm. Some stressors can be small and relatively easy to manage like a busy day at work or a small disagreement with a loved one. I said small disagreement. Other stressors can be harder to manage. 
In fact, when, they, when most surveys come out about the big stressors in life, marriage is always one of the top 10. Y'all don't, don't elbow your spouse up in here. Don't look hard at them, but it just happens to be one of the top 10. So in order to get to the marriage, you must have a wedding. And they can be extremely stressful times. It's a life-changing ceremony. Think about everything you got to do. You got to get your guest list. You got to get your food, the decorations. And sometimes you get a bridezilla. And the men just want to get on with the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now, it's very interesting. As we look at this scripture, it's interesting that Jesus Christ took this event, the stressful event, to perform his first miracle. Isn't that something? Jesus is there when we have all the stress. He's there. I'd just like to pull a few nuggets out of this passage, if you will. The first thing I'd like to share with you is our best efforts are not good enough. Our best efforts are not good enough. Now, I told you that a wedding is a stressful thing, right? Now, think about what happened, that guest list. Think about who's on their guest list. They got the disciples. They, they would turn the world upside down with their preaching, teaching, and healing. And they're invited to your wedding. You want to have this thing tight, right? You got Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, king of kings, lord of lords, walking on water, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the dark. Y'all know who he is. And then you got Jesus, the, like I said, the King of Kings and, and the Lord of Lords, who's physically at your wedding. Well. You got quite the guest list, including your family and friends who really want to check you out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a stressful event. Now, if you're a Christian, Jesus ought to be at your wedding anyway. Amen. Just a side note. Yes, sir. It's stressful for the guest list. It's stressful for the decorations. You got to get the preacher. You got to get the venue, you got to get the musicians. It's stressful for the food and the refreshments. You got the bread, you got the herbs, you got the cheese, the milk, the olives, the onions, the figs, the melons, the dried pomegranates, and the dates and the water. And apparently they had done a good job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't good enough. Come on now. Well. Come on now. With one exception, they ran out of wine. This would have been almost an insult. Yes, sir. You got Jesus there and Mary and the disciples and everybody, and you ran out of wine. Mm-hmm. How embarrassing and stress-inducing could this be? So much so that Mary has to ask Jesus to come in and help. You see, our best efforts are not good enough. But the second thing to think about is Jesus was there but he was just waiting for you to ask for help. Jesus was there. He's just waiting to be asked in to help. What I'm saying is we can do good or we can even do better than good on our own. But if you want to do the best, Jesus has to be involved. Good, better, best. I will never rest until my good is better and my better is best. You can't be the best without having Jesus Christ invited in. You see, he's there. Oh, y'all don't believe me. 139th Psalm says it better than I can. Starting with the seventh verse, it says, Whether shall I go from thy spirit or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Jesus is there. Whether you invite him in or not is another issue. Nothing happened 
until Jesus was invited to intervene. Yes, sir. Our best efforts are not good enough. Jesus was there. He was just waiting for you to ask for help. But thirdly, when you invite Jesus in, the best is yet to come. Look at this passage here again. They ran out of wine. They come to Jesus. Jesus says, go get those six water pots that are hanging around. And it says that each one of them had two to three firkins apiece. Now, a firkin was about eight and seven-eighths gallons. So if you got six water pots with two to three firkins each, that means time Jesus got through with it, it would anywhere be from 106.5 gallons to 159.75 gallons, if my math is correct. That is a serious event that they have, and they have 160 gallons of wine. Jesus gives the order. When Jesus gets things in order, it, it, they come together. Jesus says, fill it up with water. And he says, draw it out and give it to the governor of the feast. But just for a moment here, we need to explain who this governor of the feast is. There's three different definitions that I've seen for who this governor of the feast is. The first comes from Barnes Notes on the Bible. It says the governor or ruler of the feast is one who presided on the occasion, the one who stood at the head or upper end of the table. He had the charge of the entertainment, provided the food, gave directions to the servants, etc. A second definition from Ellicott's commentary for English readers. What we would, he's what we would call the head waiter, who would taste the wines, who would arrange the tables and couches, and who would be responsible for the feast. A third from Vincent's word studies is he's one of the guests selected to preside at the banquet according to the Greek and Roman usage. That's what they did. So whether this person was invited to preside, whether they were a head waiter or what have you, they were still in charge of making sure that everything was right, right? right. So after Jesus got a hold to it and makes anywhere from these, uh, takes this water for 106 to, to 160 gallons of wine, the governor of the feast, the head waiter, whomever it was who didn't know where it came from, but the people who poured it knew what came, come on in here. When the head waiter got a hold to it, he said, everybody else bring out the good stuff first. Well. And he bring out the, the cheap stuff and everybody else drunk. Well. But you waited until the end to bring out the good stuff. Oh, let me, let me go here a little bit more. He said, put water in it, right? Water is very common. 71% of the earth is covered with water. Water is in the air that you breathe in, as vapor. Water is in the rivers. Water is in the lakes. Water is in the ice caps. Water is in the glaciers. Water is in the ground. And water is in you. And water is in me. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. Water is everywhere. And water is common. Yes, sir. But you know, it wasn't until the true vine, come on here, in, who is Jesus Christ, enlisted the living water, who is the Holy Spirit, that this common wine, this common water, excuse me, became this fantabulous wine. The common water got changed because the true vine and the living water got in the mix and changed it from a common use right. to a spiritual positive use. Come on, Come on, Come on. What I'm saying is we are, can be common as common can be. Yeah. And people look at you and say, how in the world are you standing up there preaching? I know where you came from. I can be as common as common is. Come on, but when the true vine on, got a hold 
with me. When the living water got inside of me, it made me go places I never thought I could go and do things I never thought I could do. When Jesus get a hold to you. But it gets gooder. Because the best. Y'all reading ahead. You see, it was a common custom for the bride to join the groom's father's household rather than the groom and the bride establishing their own household. So if the bride and groom were of marriageable age, the groom would return to his father's house after the betrothal to prepare a bridal chamber. Mm -hmm. This process traditionally took a year or more, the length of time being dictated by the groom's father. Mm -hmm. When the place was complete, the groom would return and fetch his bride. Mm -hmm. The bride would not know the day or hour of her husband-to-be's return. Come on, so the groom's arrival was up. usually announced with a trumpet call Fix it up, sir. and a shout to the bride Fix so that up. she had some kind of forewarning. As a Christian, the best is yet to come. come on, because our bridegroom, Jesus Christ, will sound the trumpet come on, and get his bride, the church. Yeah. The best is yet to come, I tell yes, you. Yes, come In on, a preacher. moment. In the twinkling of an eye, yes, at the last trump, for the yes, trumpet sir. shall sound and the yes, dead sir. shall be raised Come incorruptible. On, and we shall be changed. Yes, for this yes, corruptible sir. must put on yes, incorruption. Yes, and this mortal yes, must put on immortality. Yes, so when this corruptible yes, shall have put on incorruption, yes, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, yes, then shall be brought to pass Come the on, saying on. that is written, yes, death is yes, swallowed yes, up yes, in victory. Yes, oh, yes, death, yes, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. But the best is yet to come. He'll sound his trumpet. Come on, He'll take us back to his father's house. Yes, sir. And not just a house, yes. but a mansion. Come on, preacher. With a new heaven yes, sir. and a new earth yes, sir. and a new city. Yes, sir. Have you ever, have you heard of a city? Come on, the street is paved with gold. Yes, three gates in the east, yes, three yes, gates sir. in the west, yes, three gates in the north, on, and sir. three gates in the south. On, There'll be no tears in heaven. Yes, no yes, crying on, in glory. Yes, the best is yet to come. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. There goes the bride again. And I heard a great voice yes, out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God yes. is with men, yes, right. and he will dwell with them, yes, and they right. shall be his people, yes. and God himself shall be with them yes. and be their God. Yes. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no more Bennett, no more Edwards, no more these funeral homes, because there ain't going to be need for no more funeral homes, because there will be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The best is still yet to come, y'all. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. 
in the city lieth four square. The length, the breadth, and the height of it are all equal. The wall of it was of jasper. The city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. Come on, y'all. The best is yet to come here. The 12 gates were 12 yes. pearls. Yes. Every several gate yes. was of one pearl. Yes. And the street of the city was pure gold, yes. as it were transparent glass. Yes. The Lord God Almighty yes. and the Lamb are the temple yes. of it. Yes. And the city had no need of the sun, yes. neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. The best is still yet to come. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, yes, sir. clear as crystal, yes, sir. proceeding out of the throne of God into the land. Yes, sir. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, yes, which bare 12 manner of fruit yes. and yielded her fruit every month. Yes. And the leaves of it were the tr of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No more wars and fighting against each other, but it was for the healing of the nations. Yes, and there yes, shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the yes, Lamb yes. shall be in it, and his yes. servants shall serve him, yes. and they shall see his face. Yes, sir. They shall see his face, on, and his name shall be in their foreheads, yes. and there yes. shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. Yes, for the Lord giveth him, them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Y'all yes, sir. Yes, sir. still don't understand on, that the best man. is come yet on, to come. Because the wicked going to cease from troubling. Yeah. And the weary going to be at rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best is yet to come. Yes, sir. I have not seen, yes, sir. ear had nor ear heard, on, neither man. have entered into the heart of man That's the right. things That's which God right. hath prepared for them yeah. that yeah. love him. Yeah. I'm telling you today, yeah. the best is yeah. yet to come. Our best is not good enough. Jesus has been there the whole time. He's just waiting for you to ask. Yes. When you invite him in, the best is yet to come. God bless you. And may have a smile. Upon you. invitation to Christian discipleship as we stand this means if you want the best to come you got to accept the best and that's Jesus Christ because he gave his best he gave his life and it's very simple to understand God's word tells us all have sinned and come short of the glory of God that the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Yes, sir. Thou shalt be saved. Bless you. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. That's right. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes, sir. So as we stand, there is an invitation for you to be a part of the best. Yes. To accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes, sir. So pray, let's pray. If you'd like to accept Jesus Christ in your life, just pray this prayer with me. I confess my sins to you, Lord. I confess that I have sinned, but I confess that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I confess that I believe in him today. Your word declares that I am saved because I believe in you. Thank you for saving me this day. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with me for the first time, you are now in the body of Jesus Christ. You are now a believer in Christ. This, so there's two others. One other thing you need to do. If you accepted him, you need to be in a church home where you can, can grow and be around other like-minded people. So if you accepted Christ in your heart, just be bold enough to start walking toward the front. The best is yet to come. Be bold enough to find out. Just start walking. Just start walking. He already did the hard work. Will you come today? Will you come today? We might not see the next homecoming, but we're here today. Make your decision today.
Don't procrastinate. Trustee McKenzie to come up, please. in the street car. <laughs> so this is some money <laughs> to help you along your way. May God continue to bless you and have them smile upon you. But always look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Amen. Amen. Your help cometh from the Lord who yes. made the heavens and the earth. Be blessed, my brother. Yes. I thought it was going to be a minute with eternity in it, but... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hopefully we'll get to hear that before the week is out. Amen. So I don't come up and do a lot of talking behind the preacher, but this is our homecoming. And so I just wanted to take a minute to uh, recognize all the preachers in the house. Um, would you please, uh, if you preach in the house, would you please stand? Let me take a minute to recognize you. Amen. Hey, God, how you doing, man? Just, I ain't seen you in forever in the day. Where you been? Oh, have mercy. Yeah, I started writing names down, and then I saw you, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm missing somebody else. I know it's somebody I'm missing. Uh, so thank you all, you know, preachers, you all could have been anywhere else. Um, and so we truly appreciate your presence here and your prayers um, for Reverend Dr. Alva. Let me, let me take a minute to single out uh, Reverend Dr. Charles Wormley. Let me single you out. Amen. Amen. And Reverend Dr. Patricia Wormley, let me single you out. Yeah, let me single you out. Um, and um, definitely this choir, the musicians in this choir. Um, 
Yeah, I wanted, I normally don't get up, but I want to take a second to just say thank you. You have been truly a, a friend to this, to this pastor ever since I've been here. That you have been. There's some folks that started out the race with me, and then I went to grab the baton, and they were gone. <laughs> I'm just being honest. But you all have truly, I mean, I appreciate you. I love you to pieces and back. And uh, I know a lot of you folk in this choir. I done worked with these people and... I have, oh no, we're not going to let Joey talk. We're not going to let Joey talk. But uh, I, I've come to, to love these folks. I mean, you all show up every time we call you. you. You're always there. And I just can't tell you how much we appreciate it. I mean, you come and you sing, you pull hearts out. I mean, you sing. And Ted, we got to fix the floor, some of the floor <laughs> when y'all leave. And we'll send the bill to Mount Zion. <laughs> amen. But, um, but to the choir, amen, the musicians, my buddy Zena over there. I've been knowing Zena as long as I've been in D.C. That's, Zena, you're getting older. <laughs> I've been here a while. <laughs> amen. But I just want to thank you all for all of you all that came out. Actually, um, you know, what I was feeling in my spirit and I was starting to tear up a little bit was I'm so glad that the church is full and we are not having a home going. Really, yeah, because it seems like every time we get together and the churches are full, whether we're here or whether we're at Mount Zion, it's all it's because we're sending somebody home. And so, what a blessing to be able to come today to just celebrate our, our annual homecoming. It's our first one uh, since COVID, it's our first one, and you all have made it a very successful amen time in the Lord. So, I appreciate you. I won't be up here long because I want what the preacher said to resonate in your mind. Uh, and, and you go home with the thought, that, that, that tremendous message that the best is yet to come. Say it with me, y'all. The best is yet to come. Okay, that was just this choir. Come on. The best is yet to come. That was almost everybody. I can see y'all. You, you, you do know I can see you up here, right? I can see if your mouth moving. Okay, let's try it one more time. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. The no. best That's what happens when we're all on one accord. We get the job done. Thank you again. God bless you all. Thank you, Piney Branch, for all those folks. I'm, I'm going to talk to them on Wednesday night, but the people who put this together, I'm y'all above and beyond. That's all I can say. Come on, preacher. Come on back. And what a wonderful sight to see the uh, praise dancers, too. Yeah. Get caught up. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. As we stand and the choir prepares their last song of the day. But it ain't going to be their last song. Amen. Y'all, some people from some other churches that I was interim pastor at. It's so uh, quite a few of you in here. I ain't gonna call y'all y'all out, but there's churches all around Spotsylvania in the area, and we thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you for taking your time to come out today. Now unto the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the Only Wise God, our Savior. 
be honor, glory, dominion, and power henceforth now and forever. Let everybody say the best, the best is, yet is yet to come. To come. God bless you. Have a great week.